Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to the free API project walkthrough. This is an open source project and I'm pretty sure you have a lot of lot of questions in your mind. I'll address them obviously in this entire playlist but first and foremost question is what can I do with this uh, entire project of free API? Learning APIs is one of the most interesting concept as well as most challenging thing that you can do. But so far we found a problem in the market that you can only do the basic stuff with the APIs like sending a request, getting the data, pretty much that's it. But what about the complex situation? How about the real world execution where there are tokens, you have to store the tokens in cookies, sessions and whatnot, and then there are refresh tokens and complex API calls, queries, there's so much. And how can anybody learn from it? This is exactly what this free API project does and helps you solve that. In this video, I'll give you a walkthrough that how the project is structured and how it is being divided so that you can utilize it further. First, any application or any programming language or framework which can handle the API calls and response is compatible with free API. You might be working in React, React Native, uh, Next.js, maybe Java, maybe using microservices, or maybe building the backends as well. You can read this project, or maybe you're working in core Android, iOS, wherever there is API calls and response, you can go ahead and work with that. These are like servers, and you have no idea how the server was designed, and you can just play with the response. Majorly, this entire project is divided into three categories. The first one being the kitchen sink. Kitchen sink is something I'll walk you through with that. Kitchen sink is where you learn the API basics. What are the server response codes like 200, 300, 400, 500? What if the data comes up as a basic JSON response? What if the data comes up as a JPG response? What happens if the database comes, data response comes up as a gzip response? How to do that? How to handle that? This all you can learn with this. The second portion of this entire project is your public APIs. They don't need any authentication. They are just like basic API hit and response. You can do so much with it. You can build uh, cards with it. You can build a, a lot of application and eventually we'll be adding more dummy weather app, uh, dummy YouTube app that we'll be eventually adding. So you can do a, so much more with this dummy data. Books, uh, there's meals, there's cats and there's dogs. There's, there's so much to learn with that and so much more you can do. You can build your to-do apps with the search functionality. There's so much more you can do and we, we will be constantly adding more. The third section of it is where the things goes really, really complex. This is where you actually build a full-fledged application. Maybe you want to learn about state management, but you don't find any APIs which are complex enough. So we are giving the third portion of it, which is complex apps in which you can work with the e-commerce app, social media app, and we'll be constantly adding more in that so that you can build a full-fledged front-end portfolio with that. Now let me walk you through with the code base that how it is uh, looking like. Uh, there are already installation videos available. You can go ahead and check them out that how the installation video looks like both with the Docker or the NPM and I'll be adding more of the installation videos on how to push it on the uh, maybe DigitalOcean, AWS and whatnot. You can try this out. So first one is actually the kitchen sink. This is one you should be walking through. If you open the kitchen sink up here and by the way, we are using the Swagger which are directly executable docs. Uh, all the endpoints and everything, including the documentation, the response, uh, the request, everything is mentioned in the documentation here. So notice here there are HTTP methods, get, post, put, you can try them out. There are status codes. We have request headers, IPs, user agent, query parameters. These are all basics. Gzip, uh, broadly, get, set, remove, to, JPEG, WebPEG. These are all basics. These are something we call in-house as kitchen sink. Somebody who knows and say, I know how to handle APIs should know all of this. This is the most basic, how you should be going. How when the somebody sends a request, get the client's IP, get the request header, get the status code and everything. So for example, somebody makes a GET request, uh, how the GET request should work. Everything is documented. Everything is properly organized. You can click on try it out, execute this, and this will give you that, hey, this is the URL where I requested this. This is the response code I received in the body. So it says all the headers, uh, your method, your status code, everything was properly given to you, a cookie was given to you, everything was properly given to you. So go ahead and play around with this. This is the basics of it. This is the phase one, as we call in the learning cycle, that this is your learning phase one kitchen sink. Once you are done with this, go ahead and work on the public APIs. We have so many public APIs for getting the random user, getting the user with the ID, getting the user truly as random. This is random users, you get many. This is where you get one only. Notice here, get a random user, get users, obviously. And then after that, we have random jokes, we have books, we have quotes, meals, 
dogs, cats, there's so much. And as the time will progress, we'll be adding more of these uh, basic hitting APIs so that you don't have to rely on any third party. You can just set this up and build your own project end to end, everything on your own. Once you're done with this public APIs, that means now you can move on to a little basic phase. For this, you can just come into database seeding, seed your database with the to-dos so that there are some databases already. You can go ahead and add your own data as well, but I recommend is just try out execute. This will inject some data in your database of to-dos. Once you are done with this, then simply go ahead and open the to-do list and try to work out with everything that is available. Get all to-dos, get the to-dos by a unique ID, try to delete a to-do, try to update an existing to-do, try to create your own to-dos and try to toggle with the existing to-dos, the state, the true and false of is it done or is it not. Once you are done with this, that means now it's time to go all the way in with the extreme APIs making complex project. This is where you first go into the database seeding and go ahead and first and foremost, pick up what you want to build, an e-commerce app or a social media app. Uh, this is the most basics of how we'll be going with that, either an e-commerce or social media. As the time will progress, we'll definitely add more complex than this one. These are already complex. Go ahead and let's just say we decided to build an e-commerce. Go ahead and first populate this one, execute this. And after that, go ahead and execute your users as well, because you will be needing them, execute this. Now you have users and uh, the, you have some data in your e-commerce application as well. Then go ahead and look into the source code. This is how you'll be getting this. First and foremost, you can go ahead and see that how many endpoints are there in my e-commerce application. Notice here, there is a profile of the users. Then we have products, some CRUD operation on products. Then we have cart functionality. We have categories. We have coupon code, which is a really complex one. Uh, we have addresses. We have list for the admin. Yes, there is so much more in this one. You can build an entire admin panel into this one. We have even Razorpay and PayPal integration with that. You can also track the order status, order ID. So this is already a very complex project. Then come up into your source code and look out that how will I study it? Go into the models and try to study the e-commerce model as well as auth model. What can I do in my users? What are the features available? Username, role, what are the information which I'm storing in my database? How this is all happening? You can study them right here. In case you don't want to study, at least get the model that what information I'll be storing in my database. Then go into the e-commerce app and look what each model looks like. Yes, we went all the way in, crazy efforts were being made. And now just look at it. For example, if I want to add categories, what are the information in categories? Name and owner. All right, so owner is a mongoose type of a user who, were, who is creating these categories. So I need to study the users. After this, we have so much more. For example, if I want to study the product model, how the product model look like. This is a real world complex app. Nothing is there on the internet so far, which went this crazy to show you how the complex and the real world project works on. So go ahead and study it and try to create all the CRUD with this. This will be a next level crazy CRUD that you have ever built. So similarly, you can go with the e-commerce, you can go with the social app, you can go with the to-do app, just learn and understand. Once you're done understanding the models and how this is all done in the real world app, Go ahead and look for that how the functionalities are there. And controllers, in the controllers, you'll find all the functionality. We have properly arranged our entire application. So here, if you'll see in the apps, obviously these are apps. So we have auth, e-commerce, social, all of that. Go into e-commerce and look for that. What is the possibility inside the categories? What controllers we have written? You can create the category. You can get all the categories. You can get the category by ID. You can update the category, you can delete the category, and all the functions are being exported. So this is all you can do, and obviously there are routes and everything to go ahead and work on with that. So as you can see, this is a really complex project, and as the time will progress, we will be adding more and more categories into it, more features, to help you to build those complex apps that you have already always been thriving and requesting, we want to build something complex, now is there is a open source project which helps you to build all those complex projects. So I know uh, a lot of effort was gone into this one. Go ahead and give us a star on the GitHub. We really, really appreciate if we get enough support. We will be definitely adding more project. If you have any suggestion, let me know in the comment section. We'll be adding those apps as well so that you can build real world, amazing apps that can, that can impress any interviewer in the world and you get better jobs. That is the goal with this open source project. Thank you so much for supporting us and we'll be adding more into this one. That's a brief overview about this free API.app project, completely open source, and I'll be adding more videos to help you understand more basics of this. Let's catch up in the next video.